One of the most common questions I get asked are things like, what project should I build? Is this a good project to build? Am I ready to build this project? And so on. And these are really hard questions to answer. I mean, I've already tried to give answers for good projects to build on a couple different videos. I'll link them at the end of this video and in the description for you. But it's really hard to give a concrete answer for what the best project for you is, since I don't know your skill level, I don't know your hobbies and enjoyments. So it's really hard for me to give you a single project. I could say like build an e-commerce project, but that may not be the right fit for you, even if it's a generically good project to build. So in this video, I'm going to give you kind of a framework or a structure you can use to apply to your own skill level in your own life to figure out what the best project for you is to build right now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you. And today I'm gonna to be going through that framework on how you can actually choose the right project for you. And I'm gonna be using a lot of analogies in this project. And that guitar back there is actually gonna play a huge role in these different analogies because learning to play an instrument and figuring out what songs you should play is like the perfect analogy for what project you are ready to build. Like, for example, when I started wanting to learn the guitar, the reason I got into it was because I was listening to, you know, awesome guitar solos and shredding on like different rock and metal songs. And I was like, man, that sounds awesome. I want to be able to play that. Picked up a guitar and I realized, holy crap, there's no way I can play any of these awesome songs that I think are really cool. I needed to start by first learning the basics. I had to learn, you know, my notes. I had to learn my scale patterns and really drill through those different things before I could go ahead and even learn the most basic song. And this is a big problem a lot of people jumping into programming run into as well. They see these cool, awesome sites, they get a great idea in their mind for a project they want to build, and then they go ahead and they're like, I'm just going to build this right away. They like watch five YouTube videos on the basics of programming, and from those five videos, they think, okay, I know enough, I'm going to build this project, and obviously you're going to get into roadblocks, you're not going to be able to build the project, and you get discouraged. So I don't want you to take that route. Instead, focus on the basics first. If you're watching this video and you don't understand a good level of the basics, Make sure you understand those before you start jumping into any moderately complex projects. And once you do start to understand those basics, make sure you start with really simple projects. These simple projects like a basic to-do application are gonna be really crucial for making sure that you solidify the base that you just learned. And it's also gonna give you a great confidence boost because being able to actually see your first project come to life is a really great feeling. It's the same thing with guitar. As soon as I started getting down those basics of playing the scales and learning the different notes, I didn't jump into some crazy dream theater solo. Instead, I decided to learn really simple riffs in songs. I learned songs like Breaking the Law by Judas Priest or the intro, you know, part two, one by Metallica. These things were really easy for me to understand, slow enough that I could really take them at my own pace. And this is the same thing with building projects. You can't jump into building a Facebook clone after spending a month studying the basics. Instead, you need to focus on those beginner projects, focus on the to-do list applications and things like that. I know they're not the most exciting or fun projects in the world, but it's important to build those out to get those small wins. But the nice thing about these projects is you can actually make them a little bit more personalized. The reason a lot of people build a to-do list application is because it covers all of the basics of an application. You can create to-dos, you can see the to-dos, you can update to-dos, and you can delete to-dos. Those are like the four actions pretty much any application has, and the to-do list application is like the most basic form of those four actions, so you can really see how they work. Now what you can do if you don't want to build a boring basic to-do list application is you can take those four different attributes of creating things, seeing them, updating them, and deleting them, and actually creating any application that does that, just make sure that it's a very simple application that does those things. So instead of building a to-do list application, instead maybe build an application that will search up movies in a database and then you can actually edit those movies, delete them from the database, read those movies from the database and create new movies. So again, this is essentially a to-do list application because it's super basic, it's just doing those four things. But now instead of being based on to-do list applications, it's based on actual movies instead. And movies are maybe something you're more interested in. So take a hobby that you have and instead of building a to-do list application, build something around that hobby that you enjoy doing. A lot of times I see people build like Pokemon based applications because they're interested in Pokemon and it's a great you know, beginner-ish project because it has just those four really basic components to it. With that said though, I still think building just a basic plain to-do list application is probably one of the best first beginner focused projects you can build just because pretty much any application in the world is a to-do list application with extra stuff added onto it. Like that movie database application I talked about, it's just a fancy to-do list application, but instead of listing a bunch of to-dos, you're listing a bunch of movies, and movies just have more data than a to-do. That's the only reason it's more complex. Now, this is the crucial step where most people run into troubles when they're learning programming. You start to learn the basics, and you start to build some of these basic to-do list-like applications, but many people either do one of two things. They either get stuck building these small applications forever, and they never move on past these basics, 
or they jump to the extreme and are like, okay, I built to-do list application, now let's build Facebook. And they skip all of the intermediary stuff. So this happens all the time where you either don't go far enough or you jump too far. Instead, you need to find a happy medium where you're slowly getting to more and more complex problems, but you're not jumping too far ahead of what you can understand. The nice thing about this stage though is since you understand the basics and you've built up a few projects up to this point, it's okay if you overshoot your abilities by a little bit. This is almost actually encouraged because if you're doing something you enjoy, building a project you find interesting, even if it's slightly above your abilities, that's okay because you're going to push yourself because you enjoy that project. A great example of this again is learning music. As soon as I got these basic songs down, I decided I wanted to learn some more complex songs that I enjoyed listening to. So I decided I was going to learn the song Omerta by Lamb of God. Now this is not necessarily a super crazy complex song, but for my skill level at the time, it was definitely above what I could do. I mean, I was playing it super slow and super bad, both at the same time, definitely not a good sign of things. But since I enjoyed the song, I really wanted to learn the song, I was pushing myself way harder than I would have if I was learning something like Yankee Doodle, which I could care less about. So it's important when you get to this intermediary stage, find a project that interests you. Take your hobbies, whatever it is, go online and just search to see if there's an API for that project. You know, like look up football stats, for example. There's definitely APIs for those. Find that API data and then build a project around the data you can find. Or maybe you're just interested in something in general, start to build a project around that that's close to your skill level. And like I said, if it's slightly above your skill level and beyond what you can do right now, that's okay and almost even encouraged because you're going to push yourself so much harder because it's something you're interested in and you want to see it completed, unlike a boring to-do list application. So at this stage, you should be building medium-sized projects that are pushing your skills to the next level. If you're constantly only building things that are easy, you're not actually learning that much because you're just going through the motions of doing the same thing over and over again. You need to be pushing yourself, struggling, looking things up, and that is where the learning comes in from building projects. And also, if you build these unique and cool projects, they're going to look amazing on your resume. A lot of people are like, oh, should I build an e-commerce site for my resume? And sure, it looks good because lots of companies need those, but the problem is, Everybody has an e-commerce site on their resume, but you want to be unique. Building your own one-off football styling stats application, that's going to be something that's way more unique to you. Sure, a couple other people might do it, but it's going to put you and make you stand out above all the people that have done just boring e-commerce and to-do list applications. Now this all may sound great to you, but you're probably still asking, Kyle, how do I know what project is the right skill level? Like I may know about where I am skill level wise, but is this thing too easy, too hard? I don't actually know. And the best way to find out what's going to be too easy and what's going to be too hard is to think of a project you want to build, whatever it is, let's say that football stats application, and then think about all of the different components that go into building that, at least at a high level. So first of all, we need to access the API that is storing all of the data. So we need to know how to access an API. Most likely based on the API, we're going to need some credentials, which means we're going to need to have a backend server to store that credential information. So now I have to access an API and I need to deal with credentials and a backend. Next, I need to be able to take all of that data and present it in whatever way I want. So I need to take data, transform it, and present it to the user using things like CSS and HTML. So already with this one small project, I have to deal with an API, credentials, a backend, a frontend, CSS, HTML, most likely some frontend JavaScript as well. So I have a lot of things going into this project. And then ask yourself, how many of those things have you done before or you feel somewhat confident in? Let's say, okay, I've interacted with APIs before, check, I'm not too worried about that. I've interacted with HTML, CSS, and front-end JavaScript before, check, 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 all those are pretty easy. But you know what? I haven't really done much with back-end development or credentials. So those are kind of like areas where I'm a little bit iffy on, I've not really done much of that. This would be a great project then because most of the project is pretty easy for you. I mean, I'm not gonna say easy, but you've done it before, so it's not too difficult. You're not taxing yourself too much. But there's a couple spots like the back-end where you're really unsure how things are going to work. So this is a great project because let's say you get stuck working on the back end and you're just slamming your head against the wall, you can't figure it out. What we can do is you can just pause, stop working on that and go to the front end where you're a little bit more familiar and start working there and it'll be enjoyable. You'll start to reinvigorate yourself. You'll start to make progress. And then you can again, move back over to the back end and start to do that process again until you start to get stuck really bad and then move to the front end and kind of flip flop like this, making sure you're always engaged and enjoying the project. So this right here is going to take you from beginner projects to intermediate projects, but what about those advanced larger scale projects? These are projects you probably never even tried to tackle, or if you have, you really struggled and gave up on it. And that's okay. These projects are hard, very time consuming, and not something you should tackle until you've built out at least one medium, if not multiple medium sized projects. 
And these larger size projects, I would recommend only building one at a time because it's going to take a lot of time to complete. A lot of these projects are going to take you a month or so of work to complete. So if you're building out three or four of them at the same time, it's just going to make it feel even slower and you're gonna feel like you're not making any progress at all. So let's say for example, you wanna build out a really detailed e-commerce site for your big large project. Well, that's going to take tons of different skills. It's going to take a ton of time to work on. So what you want to do is break it into small individualized tasks that are going to make it more enjoyable to work with. So let's say you'd want to take this e-commerce site and you can break it down. You can say, okay, I'm going to work on the user login portion. I'm going to get that built out all the way. So you build the entire user application for logging in. And that may only take you a couple days or a week or so, let's say. So now in a week, you have a individual part of your application that's working and that's a really good feeling. Well, if you started to do a little piece of everything here and there, two weeks later, you'd still have nothing complete. You'd have 10% of everything complete instead of having one portion complete 100%. So that's kind of like a hack I want to give you to make doing your projects more enjoyable is break them up into smaller chunks. And now these large projects are really just a bunch of small and medium sized projects stitched together. And that stitching together of all of these different components is where you're going to learn a lot when it comes to programming. Learning how to build a small project is great for learning how to actually use the language and how programming works. Building medium projects is really good for learning how to take all those programming concepts and stitching them together to really make something unique. And then building a large project is where you actually take your skills as a designer and a developer even to the next level, because now instead of just knowing how the language works, you need to know how actually structuring code works, how to write clean code, and how to make it so your code can change over time, because this is now a larger scale project. So each size project is perfect for learning different skills. So if you're really struggling with the language, go with a beginner project. If you understand the language, but you are kind of confused with how to connect everything together, go with a medium sized project. And once you start to really understand the language and how to connect things together, go with a large scale project so you can learn how to connect different pieces of code and components together to really build something cool. Now, when it comes to choosing this large scale project, pretty much do the same thing you did with the medium sized project. Find something that you enjoy, a hobby you have, whatever it is, and then try to find a project that is mostly easy, like you've built out all these different components before, so you just kinda need to sketch it together, but you've never built a project with all of those different components together all at once. Because the stitching together of all those different components is what you're going to learn a lot of in this larger project. And this is a skill that's really useful for actual, you know, working in a full-time job. Because in a full-time job, you're going to be building and working on large applications. I mean, most of the time, these are huge applications that have been in development for years with hundreds or thousands of developers. So understanding the struggles you run into as your project grows is a really important skill to have going into your first job. Now, if you're still trying to figure out what project you want to build and you want some inspiration and ideas, you're going to want to check out the videos I have linked over here. These videos are going to be a bunch of different suggestions for projects you can build, and they're going to be all skill levels from intermediaries, beginner, and advanced. So with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.